on account of your own blood, Jesus. We are free even to hear from you. We give you praise. We are no longer those whose ears will be smeared by the blood of the goats, like the priests who are done. Because today the blood of Jesus has cleansed us and our ears are able to hear the living God. Such a privilege. On account of that blood, Father, accept us this morning and may we be released for every other ministry that you want to do to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can sit down. The Lord bless us so much. Good morning. Yeah, such a good, good morning to me also. I thank God the week has been fine. I know each one of us has got a testimony to give because of what the Lord has done. I am standing here a very excited person. God took me on a journey this morning to think and meditate on the journey that I am coming from. And I was that person who could not face God. I was that person who could not have any confidence because I know how I was and how I lived. And I celebrated so much the blood of Christ this morning. And I, I got so excited that there is such a blood that could cleanse a person like myself. And I requested God, I don't want to see this blood setting people free. I don't want to see it. You did it for me. Please do it to the rest. And I arrived here and I met one of my brothers who was saying, I just need Jesus in my life. And he said, I am trapped in a certain thing. And when he was explaining to me how he is trapped, I told him, brother, you are not new. I mean, you are not the only one. I was right there. I denounced Jesus. I was right there in those other covenants. And I was so excited. I told him, on the account of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are going to receive your freedom this day. And I promised him he will not go home until he's more liberated because you're going to baptize him today, today. Amen. So I really thank God. Because there is, I told him there is an exchange of covenants in the blood of Christ. So today, if you're not baptized, please join us after the second service. Don't mind, there are clothes here. Zinyatua tuna zinatolewa za kusaidiana. Leo, this is just an idea. Ata mimi zina. So, kiniona nimeva blouse, kidogo, nikibatiza. Don't worry. It's for ministry. But we really have to see that freedom and liberty happen. Amen. The other reason why that thing was so deep in me is because of the topic or the book we have been studying. By the grace of God, as I was doing my personal study, by the time the pastor was announcing we will be doing the book of Galatians, that was the book I was studying personally. And so I have read it, I have done a study after study, and the moment it was unfolded to us, the many times the pastors have stood here to unfold, to unfold that book, it has become so new to me. And I really got to understand some of the forefathers of the faith, like Martin Luther. They, though they were so much amazed by the Bible when it was revealed to them, they singled out a single book, or like two books, Romans and Galatians. And Martin Luther could not shy away to say, I am married to Galatians, the book of Galatians, and the book of Galatians is married to me. Others said it's like the Magna Carta. This is the constitution of the kingdom of God. How a Christian is liberated because it is taking us on a journey. The book of Galatians is taking us on a journey since we got saved. Then it is taking us to where we enjoy the freedom and then it is giving us the risks and the dangers. And there is no higher position any Christian can go above what is provided for in the book of Galatians. And also the depths that a Christian can fall to are also explained in the book of Galatians. And there is no greater freedom a person can have in God more than what is explained there in the book of Galatians. And I found it to be very rich. It is kind of a, a, a conclusion of so much that Jesus did actually from Abraham 
who came before the law of his also touching and concluding and analyzing the law that is during Moses he's also coming to the teachings of Jesus and he's taking us beyond the death of Jesus and the book of Galatians takes all that since Abraham receiving the covenant then the law coming then you've got the Jesus teaching and then the epistles it's such a such a profound book and I request if you have not gotten an interest I'm doing this purposely for that person who have not yet developed such an appetite for this book please do it study it it's so simple thank God this moment we are also guided and more instructed on how to read um, this book so uh, when I thought of my life I related so much to what is here and of what I really need the depths I would request I require to have in God I found it here it is so simplified and those Sundays passed up to last Sunday it was so much broken down for us kindly develop an appetite develop an appetite for this book it will explain so much to you we are doing a, by, a book by book to those that are new book by book study right now we are in the book of Galatians and we are in chapter 3 to be precise it was introduced to us and so I'm not going to go back to verse 1 I'm going to begin from verse 5 but for the context purpose I'm going to start from verse 1 I had a diagram I don't know whether uh, it can be displayed kidogo for us a simple diagram I heard it once. I remember I, I was here on a topic called Salmon. I displayed a similar diagram. So today, I request that we may have it, maybe to have a, a recap of that. I don't want you to, to have so much to think about it, more than what I'm going to lead you to. And um, simply, the book of Galatians it is ex taking us to enjoy and understand that we have been set free Jesus came and said if the son sets you free you are free indeed and the reason why he was talking about a son to those Jews it is because in the past the son and the father especially an adult son was given full and equal rights to the father and so if my fa in my family or in the family of those people they had slaves they had slaves and it was the prerogative or the authority of the owner of the slaves to set that slave free at will. So if they bought a slave, they want to release that slave, the owner did it freely. And also when the son came to age or matured, the son of that family, he also received the mandate and the authority. So they too could release a slave. We are together. So Jesus is saying to those people who understood that culture that if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. But the son will be doing it on behalf of the father. So the son could do it on behalf of the father. And so Jesus is saying the father's interest, our God the father's interest is to set us free. The interest of the father is to set us free. And now the father has sent his son. And the son has become of age. You remember also in the book of Galatians, I am sure we are not going to get there. But it says about a son. If the child, if the son is still a child, he is not yet entrusted with the estate of the father. You remember that? It is still in Galatians. So Jesus is saying the father's interest is to set us free. But the, he has sent his son for that. So Jesus is telling them, if the son sets you free also, now Jesus, representing the father, you're going to be free indeed. And so that is why we have God the father, the son. The father wants to set us free. The son came to do it. And the Holy Spirit is with us to set us free. The Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit is only facilitating what Jesus has done and Jesus has done what the Father wanted. So if you are that, you, we are that person, you are under the freedom of the Father that was done by Jesus and the Holy Spirit is, is making it materialize. So we are those people and that is the intention of God. 
that you may live in the freedom. Free, what is this freedom you are talking about? Freedom to do what? Number one freedom is to access God without any hindrance. To access God. And that is why we got something called atonement. That we were being hindered to access God because of our sins. But Jesus has canceled that debt. And now we, we have the freedom to access God. Right now, we can know, the, we can understand better this freedom. Tomorrow, go to the governor, tell him, Ibarabara itengenezwe. Uone. Ukifika tu kwa get pale, pale, utasukumwa bali sana. Sija sema president, imesema governor. So if we have the freedom to access the Father, that freedom is freedom indeed. And also we have freedom to access the kingdom and to access the kingdom benefits. So we are talking of freedoms for so much that now we have been given a kingdom. We have freedom. Matthew chapter 18 says that Jesus told Peter, now that you have understood that I am the Messiah, I am that one who was prophesied to come. I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Keys means fugua umanisha freedom. Kwa sababu, Jesus never told Peter, I've given you a hammer. Nyudo. Ya kweda kufuja mirango. You know, sahi tukisema tufanya tuombe maombi. We were taught by someone to break doors. Jesus did not talk about breaking doors. He talked about the key. The key is very specific. Receive these keys. Go and open there and remove whatever you want or whatever you need. So you cannot do that unless you have freedom. And that freedom is this one. So Jesus has done so much to give us freedom. The other thing that we have received freedom in is that God the most holy, the Kadosh of, Kadosh of Israel, can live inside a person like me. God the most holy can live inside of me that one is a freedom that you can never imagine so we have that freedom jesus intended that we live in that freedom and the other thing that we receive freedom in is that we we are so free to be oppressed we are so free to be oppressed so whenever i feel the enemy coming to me i remember i am free so why should the devil oppress me ukinyongwa usiku unakubuka bona ninanyongwa kama mtumwa I am free, so free to be oppressed. So that is the intention of God. The Father wanted it. The Son made it to materialize and the Holy Spirit is now doing it. And that is what mostly Paul is talking in chapters 3 to 4. Chapters 1, now that person who got saved, like you and me, like the brother we prayed with today, God intends that he be as free as that. He lived that way. But Paul is telling us of two dangers of that Christian. Two. And number one is that you may be free, but because of the introduction of some rules and regulations that the book of Galatians is warning us about, that yes, you are saved, but plus salvation, you need to be circumcised. Or you need to do this. For example, when we got saved at home, by the shards, the number one rule we were expected to do is that you must tuck in your shirt. If you don't tuck in your shirt, you, are, you don't appear a believer. So much it went beyond modesty. It went into you must be need for you to be a Christian. So others are told if you are being saved, you must wear something. You must dress this way. You must do this way. When Gino Nambiwa, now that you are saved, Kuomba, every moment you want to pray, you must kneel. Those rules and regulations, they do what? They take us back to this part that I'm calling um, legalism. These are, the, these are the things that are angling Paul. Paul is so mad that after people were set free, they were not taking, taken back to legalism, law. And that is a trap. It's a trap because it's human made. Ni watu wa metengeneza mitego. And we tell you, you know, when you come into this church, this is what you're supposed to do. One, two, three, four. Like there's another church in town. Ladies, when you want to go there to receive deliverance, because mostly they go there to receive deliverance and have demons taken out, you must be in a dress or a nice cut. Otherwise, you are not, the ushers back there at the gate, they are not going to allow you. So it is man-made. And Jesus was so mad at 
or angry with the leaders of the of religion because they made traps for the people. In actual fact, Jesus is saying, "You Pharisees, munafunga what? You are standing at the door there. You don't. You're not entering the kingdom. Neither are you allowing people to come in." And so he's saying, "When you got to make someone to convert someone to become a Jew, because you." By that time, if you are, for example, we are the Kikuyus or the Luos, and we want to make other tribes like ours, what you did, we could make you, we could do a sacrifice. For example, in the Kikuyu land, there is something called Goshiarona Aboli. Goshiarona Aboli, if you are a Kamba and you are now into the Kikuyu land, there was those rituals, there were those rituals, Abuzi is, is chijad and Unafungwa hapa intestines, small intestine, alafu inakatwa kama ile obliko kond. Mi nimeona zikifanywa, so I'm saying what I know. And so, ikikatwa inafanyika umezaliwa kwenye hiyo family, ama kwenye hiyo tribe. So the Pharisees, they could go to make other people Jews. And Jesus is telling them, you are making that person more a son of hell than yourselves. It is these traps. Easy traps. And once you are there, it is sometimes get so hard the shakahoras are here legalism someone has made rules for you to get to heaven for god to be pleased with you you must you must do one two three they have been trapped and this trap is so strong sometimes people die in this trap another another reason uh paul is giving warning to the church is that if you get saved and you over enjoy freedom you are going to fall into something called license. What do you use license for? If you have a license, a driving license, you can drive anywhere you want in this country. License or licentiousness, if you have ever found it in the Bible, licentiousness. It is, some people feel they are too free to do whatever they want. And that's why Paul is saying, don't allow your freedom to make you sin. It is the, this way. So if you have ever heard of a Christian doing a scado, or especially leaders in the church, it is because they over practiced license. There are so much here. And this is a swamp. You may not get out. So kindly remove that image because I didn't want us wanted to remain there. I wanted us now to see that our aim is to remain as free as possible. That is the intention of this book. And that's why we are doing this study. When, when you could hear... I remember the pastor one day, he was so much emphatic to remind us that even here, we don't make rules for the people. It is because he knew once that is a, a path nobody should go back to. Or we, can, we don't want to uh, introduce legalism, neither do we want people to go into carnality or licentiousness. That someone is so free, so free to do anything they want. And Mbaka, they, they mess up. In the, in the name of exercising freedom. So, when we now study the book of Galatians chapter 3, I hope now you remember that picture. Paul is pointing a warning on that side and also another warning on the other side. Jesus wants us to be free and so free that we are free from sin. And, um, okay, let me not go back to that intro. Uh, it's just because I, I, I feel this book has really, really blessed me. So much blessed me. Let's go to, let, let me first read chapter 3, verse 1. In the chini haraka, kusababu, uh, we were being taken through it. I'm only doing it because of context. Sorry for taking so much time in that. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Sorry, I'm reading from RSV. Thank you. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun with the spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience many things in vain if really it was in vain? Does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Thus, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. See, so, you see that it is the men of faith who are the sons of Abraham. Let me, let's get first of all to them. Okay, let me read the verse 8. And the scripture 
For seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. There's a lot of wealth in that. But because so much verse 1 and up to verse 7 was introduced to us, I only would want us to, know, to see this one thing which made me to worry. Not to worry per se, but to get so concerned. We always receive this question that can a Christian be bewitched? Can a witch uh, affect a Christian? And what is this bewitching? It is to influence someone's mind against their will. So someone can influence you to go through this route, but you are going through this other route. Can a born again Christian be, uh, receive this bewitching? A demonic inspiration. Someone can be demonically inspired to do something. I remember one time, and uh, it's a testimony or something that I know happened to one of us some years back. They received a phone call in the night. And when that lady received a phone call, she was instructed by the person from the other side that you are under attack. They don't know, you know, she's a stranger. But he's telling her, you know, you are fran fran, eh, you are under attack, and God is saying, you wake up now and pray. Wake up and pray. Our sister obeyed. She prayed. I tell you what happened after that. She was so much under attack that we were invited to help her. She got sick, I think, for how many days? I know some of us can remember that story. And no, is prayer, are prayers bad? They aren't. That was in prayer which a demonic inspired somebody. And now, another question is, is this a normal Christian? Paul is talking to Christians who, the Bible says, had received the Spirit. So that, the Galatian church was a church that was full of the Spirit. People could speak in tongues, people could prophesy. And on top of that, God used some of them to do miracles. And to those people, Paul is saying there could be a possibility of bewitching. And why is this bewitching? Because they have started to listen to other people, introducing another message beyond what they had received. And they gave this, uh, the devil a chance. Now, if I may not go back there, there is a, a, pass, uh, a verse in verse 6 saying, Thus, Abraham believed, believed God. So all those questions Paul is asking, they are somehow rhetoric questions. He's asking them to invite them to think. Paul is telling Timothy, think about those things that I've told you, and the Lord will give you understanding. He's inviting them to think. That's why he's asking these questions. And in verse 6, he's kind of giving them an answer. He's telling them, Thus, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Do you know why this, these people had drifted to be bewitched or to listen to people giving a new message? The answer is in verse 6. Paul is giving them this answer. Kwa nini mtu abame okoka vizuri, arafu tuone gafra mebadilika, anasema atenda shakahora, anasema atafanya hizo vitu za kugua trapped by someone. And you are wondering, see this is the very, very person. I remember one time I prayed with a lady who told me, you know, she was a, a master's graduate from J. Kuat, a born-again Christian. Na kaniambia ametoka thika mahali kwa nasatina B, who has told her that zile shide ukonazo, you need to be washed clean by me, na rafu ni kupake mafuta. Na kama kawaida, if we, we see you in bathroom with clothes, there is a problem. So she, and I could look at her, and I compared the intelligence level of that lady, my sister, plus what has happened. Something is wrong, and I could not tell her, but you know, the, the only characteristic you could give for such a person is in Galatians chapter 1, who has bewitched you? Those people are being bewitched. Why are people simply bewitched or being led to this trap? It is because people are looking to be right with God. That's the only trap. People are so hungry. They are looking for righteousness. So, sir, you can be 
you are good but the only thing remaining for God to be happy with you kutoka leo uvae kinyasa and someone so much interested to be right with God or righteous they can do anything you want to be right with God to go to heaven fast until you die today over 400 people are dead in shakahora why they are looking to be at right starting with God and if there be any desire in all these people that I see here and those that are hearing me if there be any one desire in all of us is that father may I be found right with you the prayers we make we always imagine ourselves na sasa nikioba hivi ninaoba nimefurahisha Mungu ninapendeza Mungu I remember I, we were praying we've been praying with my kids and one of them actually both of them you you tell them to pray and their father in the name of Jesus we ask you please to forgive us every sin we have done they imagine you know, that consciousness of sin is too much a trap that unless Jesus addressed it, it he knew it would be a big trap for many people and that's why it will actually lead to Galatians opening a door to the devil to bewitch them people are looking to be righteous to be righteous until wakati umesoma biblia kwamba imekwambia Jesus was made a sin so that we can become not have but we can become the righteousness of God if i can tell you i am righteous today utanikubusha don't be proud god rejects the proud but he gives grace to the humble but the scripture have told me that i am the righteousness of who of god how many people have ever confidently went to god in prayer and you told him thank you I'm your righteousness. We are we we must go to him to tell him father I am a great great sinner. Fine. As that be as that as it is but the word of God has said you are the righteousness of God. But from where Paul is now telling us the reason why you are righteous the reason why you are the righteousness of God He is now explaining to us where that has come from and that's where we are going to get from here not on account of what you have done not on account of what you will do but on account of what Jesus has done so he is explaining to them you should no longer feel like you are not righteous you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus period number two, that righteousness has not come as a result of your works And that is the verse we are reading now verse 7. The Bible is saying, see that it is men of faith who are the sons of Abraham. So, why is Paul connecting? Number one, thus Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Abraham never lived that straight straight path without sinning or without committing a problem or uh, committing sin. We all know the situation of hunger but the bible is saying he was rec- it was reckoned to him as righteousness do you know this reckoning my bible is imeiweka in 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 um imeiweka he believed god and it was reckoned reckoned ni unaonekana unaonekana unaona kwa mfano ikiwa hapa maybe huwa tunavaa zile guo za zile kanzu za pastors alafu wewe a deacon avai hiyo guo ya pastor kutoka Yesu ataonekana like he's a pastor right so that is what reckoning is reckoning god is still aware of the nature that you are god is still aware but he has clothed you with jesus christ and do us from today when we look at you even demons when they look at you inaonekana like you are jesus that's why the bible is saying very very comfortably that as Jesus is we are looking like him in this earth bible talks about in this earth that is a righteousness that can only be reckoned nikupewa tumepewa and so paul is connecting that as Ab- abraham believed god and it was reckoned to him as righteousness just for the by the virtue of believing what god had said that alone mungu akasema this is a righteous person then the bible says see so you see that it is men of faith who are sons of abraham men of faith which faith you simply trust god do i tell somebody here 
Kwa sababu Paul is arguing about it. Okay, let me not preempt. Let's read the other verse. And uh, the scripture for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying in you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are men of faith are blessed with Abraham who had faith. Verse 10, for all who rely on works of the law are under a curse for it is written Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all the things written in the book of the law and do them. Kindly let's dwell there a little bit. Allow me. We say all of us are in pursuit of what? Righteousness. Skiramft. We are conscious and that's what we want. I would want to be at a right standing with God. We, are, we would want all to be righteous. And we would want that God is no longer angry with me. And God is actually happy with me. And so Paul is explaining and saying, how can you achieve or acquire that righteousness? And he's saying it is a matter of faith. And he's telling us how that faith works. It works as it did to Abraham. Who believed God? What God said, he believed it. And so he's explaining the last verse. And Asema, all who rely on works of the law. So those are the two main sources of conflict. People want to be righteous, yes. But how? How? People want to be righteous. How? Number one, Paul is saying there is a means that was used by Abraham, believing God, and another means is by the law. So these are the two sources. People want to draw what? Righteousness. They want to acquire righteousness. That's why we had this, the diagram here. Paul is saying, in the Old Testament, as people became conscious of their sins, they were given the law so that they can get more consciousness of sin. So Abraham, Amekuja, Kabla, Moses. So Abraham lived 400 and that years before Moses. And to Abraham, he was given righteousness on account of believing God. Don't forget that. And actually this uh, version is saying uh, it is the gospel. The gospel was preached to him. The gospel is the good news. What are the good news? What's the good news? The good news is Wacha tuseme kwa mfano kwa wale watu wabao wakona watoto wako shule. Ukienda shuleni uambiwe you be told you the parent you are required to pay 10,000 shillings for your child's school fees. See on the news. Haya. What about ukienda kwa hiyo shule mzazi mwingine aende kwa hiyo shule aambiwe na head teacher the fees that your child was supposed to pay was 10,000 shillings but as a school we have considered your child and we have paid or cleared the fees for your school fees. Those are also news. Sidio. So news is a kwanza ni kutaka kwenda kujua how much am I charged for my kids school fees. We are told 10,000. Mzazi mingina meambiwa it is 10,000 but as a school we have paid for you. Which is good news. It is the latter. That the school fees has been paid. That's why I'm saying uh, the gospel is the good news. Good news for what? It is not to be told that Jesus died. It is he died for you. It is not enough that to know that Jesus shed his blood. But the good news is that blood was shed for you. That's the good news. So it is not just a matter of being told how much you are supposed to pay. But it is how much has been paid for you. And that is the argument Paul is giving. So you want to be righteous? Yes, God demands that you be righteous. In actual fact, without the holiness, nobody will see God. And everybody becomes conscious. But to Abraham, he was told, oh, okay, don't worry. You just believe in what I've said. And it was given him, and it was preached to him, the good news, that don't worry, Abraham. Though umetoka kwenye, Inchenye watu hawabudu mungu wa binguni, don't worry. Though you are still conscious that umechukua haga, don't worry so much. You have been reckoned as righteous. From Abraham, we come all the way to Moses. And the children of Israel, they are now conscious of their sin. God gave them the law. And to do what? 
so that they may do the law and somehow receive the righteousness of God. Abraham was not to do anything. Abraham was only to hear God and obey. Righteous. What about the children of Israel? God says in the book of Deuteronomy, if you will not do all that I have commanded in this book of the law, you should die. So, no righteousness without doing everything in the law. So, the children of Israel wanted so much to be righteous. And so, they wanted to do all the law. So many as they were. So many. And it was impossible. So, Paul is talking to the people who have the mighty side of Moses and the children of Israel. They want the favor of God, but on obeying the law. But wanna chinja. They want to chinja on the day of atonement. They want to give this offering in the morning. They want to burn incense in the morning, in the evening. They want to do all these things. And Paul is telling them, those people, they never received righteousness because of that. And he's reminding them that God, before the law came, God had already preached righteousness to Abraham. So today, God promised Abraham, not Moses. God did not promise Moses that you, Moses, God never told Moses that I'll give children uh, after you. He only told who? Abraham. So God never wanted to duplicate the law to us. He wanted to duplicate the good news. So as Abraham became righteous because of believing God, he was promised all those other people that you believe me like you have done, they will be righteous. And so Paul is telling them, Nyinyi Galatians, you have been made righteous, but not as a result of obeying the law, but as a result of obeying God. So there is something that he's saying. He's saying, all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. This is according to Deuteronomy. I think chapter 21, verse 22. We have so many curses. There is this day that Moses called the people of Israel. Mount Gerizim. Some people start on the Mount Gerizim, others on Mount uh, Mount what? Nebo. And so to the to those that were on one mountain, they were to pronounce the blessings. And the blessings were very few than the curses. And so they were told by God. You see, the curses are very many. And they were told the only condition. For you to receive these blessings is you do all that is required in the law. Our answer is very simple. Our question and answer is here. Were they able to do all that was in the law? The answer is no. So they missed on all the blessings. So Paul is telling them, all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cast be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. It is not just a matter of missing the blessing or the promise, but actually living a curse. So if we, the, the diagram, if we introduce laws, we should not just introduce some, but to introduce every other law. Because the law is good if we want to follow the law. And if we miss out on one, just one. I remember there was this cabinet minister who was in a public meeting. He was uh, in the government here, Kibaki. And never did people talk about his dress code, ever, un unless that day. And this, was, this that minister had socks, and that became a, an issue. People didn't have any problem with these suits. People didn't have any problem with anything else he wore. But because of that small problem of the socks, even the wife had to come public and apologize to the media. If it is doing the law, we do it. If we miss out on one, we live under the curse. That's why it is so dangerous to live in legalism. If we introduce some rules here, we trap people. And as a Christian, there was this song, and I don't know whether we be familiar with that. We are not singing. But in a sema, uh, we used to, to sing it at work. We tried to, to, to think about that song. 
Yo tege te nyoni. E dari tamu gedi oh itu tiada jira. Datora gadino dari tamu gedi oh itu tiada jira. Hari ada imereire no hari hari amari no higa tamu isi anata mu tege yo tege te nyoni. E ni gironi mahi. Let me say it is this is what it is saying. Wakati ni yokoka when I got saved. Or before I got saved, I was like a stranger deep in the forest, lost there. But now, I saw, I was discussing that with the brother who got saved today. You know, you were like in a forest. But so you see, now Sema, you, you want to receive Jesus. You are obeying a voice that is not yours. Because you cannot come to Jesus unless he invites you. So, deep in that forest, we wanted to, 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 to step to Dogo. You know, just as a path to do or two, and you're supposed to follow that because that one could lead you to, to the outer world. So this uh, artist is saying, well, I was in that forest, and finally, wow, I was out. But where, where I came out, I met people who, have, who wanted to trap me. They lived like those who had set traps, like those people who trap birds. And so when I entered into their hands, I lost all the time and the chance to know that Jesus actually is my savior because they introduced me into laws after laws after laws. And so there's something that I want us to see here that it is not just missing the blessings. Wakati wa shidwa kufanya all the law. They they lived under the curse. So Paul is giving them at hazard. He's telling them if you want to live under the law, so you are told that if you want to be saved, you must be uh, circumcised and all that. Okay. Have you done all the law? The answer is no. So you are actually a diacus. But that's why he could not understand how they transformed wakatoka kwenye kupewa loho and now they are into, into believing God that he, they will only win favor to God if they do something other than only trusting in what Jesus has done. So he's, and this is what our answer is. Our answer is now that you and I are not able to fulfill all the law, Jesus Christ, he went to the cross so that he could become a curse for us. A curse because of what? For those people who are not able to do all the law. So Jesus fulfilled the law. Is the law bad? The Bible says no. The law is holy. It is God who gave the law. But God came and he wanted to change the covenants. The blessing to my people will no longer be when they do all that is required in the law. If someone trusts in Jesus, that is enough for them. And there is a conclusion I made when I went through this book. And also in, um, in the knowledge I have in the scriptures. If there be a bigger trap for anybody here or anybody in the Christian fraternity, Kama kuna mtego mkubwa ya mtu yoyote yule. It is that person who would present themselves and their own good works to God to qualify for favor. If anybody was to present to God any goodness of their own, that person is in a bigger trap than a Christian who took alcohol yesterday. That one is at a better place to be delivered than the person who is self-righteous. A person who is self-righteous is in a bigger trap because they are saying this is what they are saying I have done all the law and so God you are owing to me favor I have given every money that father you wanted and so you owe to me favor have you ever been to these services and you are told to claim claim so you have done it to God claim and remind him I have fasted for 40 days 40 and you can lay to God and claim, lay any claim to him because of 40. God will tell you, he has fasted for, 40, for all eternity. He has never eaten that food. And he's still God. And he has not, and he's not blagging. It is because of what Jesus did that we receive the favor of God. And so, if you want to avoid, and I want to avoid the curse, the Bible says in Jeremiah, 17. Cast be every man 
who puts their trust in a man. So it is not just tr trusting my uncle to help me. No, it is trusting in this man that he can do. He is so good to receive from God what I need. That when I'm there and I'm told I'm coming to preach, I'm like, oh, I've read the book of Galatians 20 times. So, Ninauliza Nirini, time, praise and worship. What are you doing there? You know, I want to, to go and hammer the gospel. Mimi, it is not on account of anything I have done. If you have received any coin this week, I am telling you for a fact. Unaiza ukasema ulifanya kazi na mikono yako. Iyo mikono kuna mtu wa mehangiwa hivi. Pare kinyata. Na iyo mikono imetolewa. Siyo iyo yako umefanya kazi nayo. Na umeani iyo sweat. No. Someone does not have even those hands. Someone also may say, eh, and you look nice. Your body is nice. Squeeze umejenga. Ni kujua kukura balanced diet. Do you know there is somebody, sahi, aliuma kijiko kimoja, jana, wakapigania simu wote mbaka kwa anti, wakashukuru mungu. Juhu yako kenyata. Haezi kura. For two weeks haja kura. Now that ameuma kijiko moja, wamepigia na simu. Imagine ya mekula. Na mimi ni nasema, the, book, the body I have is as a result of kujua kubalance diet. Nothing, I am saying nothing that you have and I have, that we have earned, is as a result of purely the grace of God. Otherwise, this is what the Bible is saying. And I better finish there. But the Bible is saying this. Let me tell us. Because I was too bad a sinner, I never deserved anything. But today, I have something. I never deserved anything, but I have something. And here something I am saying is as a result of my hard work. Do you know what I'm doing? I am saying the death of Jesus is all in vain. That because I have this handkerchief, I never could have one, but now I have it. And in a sema, I earned it. I have worked. Okay. You have worked for it? Fine. You are in the category of those people that are saying Jesus died in vain. That is simply what Paul is telling them. You people, you received the spirit. God worked miracles among you. And now you think you can work to please God. You are simply saying that Jesus has died in vain. Because when I came to you, I demonstrated to your very eyes Jesus being crucified. And you, it went into your hearts and you believed him. When you believed him, the Father gave you the spirit. The Father worked miracles. And now you are saying, huh, you can do something to earn God's favor, to earn God's righteousness. On top of what I showed you here, Jesus dying, you people are bewitched. That's the danger of legalism. Hallelujah. Oh. The few minutes I have. Hey, this book, I don't know. I better not be given exposition. So rich. And it has ministered to me so much. The Bible is saying, so then those who are men of faith are blessed with Abraham who had faith. For all, okay, now it is verse 11, sorry. Now it is evident that no man, so Donna Paul has brought them where I have brought us. No man is justified before God by the law. Not just the lawyer kuchinja, but ata ile lawyer kabra niombe inabidi niangalie hivi. Kabra niombe, what you mean me? This is what happened to me. When I got saved, and we got saved a number of us, we were taken to the both extremes. Because when we got saved, we were in the mainstream church. And so we came under very many rules and regulations. In actual fact, even the very liturgy, ya vile tunafaa kufanya na kuedereza, ibada, imeadikwa. So there is a place where people should start up. So I said, oh, no, 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 it is starting up. No, it is starting up, okay. So you read, you read, you read. What about us when you answer kuhubiri? We started preaching there. It was given to us, written. So it, if it was John chapter 1, we all had to preach from John chapter 1. Nina Kubuka, we, we agreed with some of my brothers, we want to defy that. So we could go there, we allow them to read the two readings, then we, we jumped into other, into other verses. We started defying. So I was introduced into legalism. So much was legalistic. For me to stand here, I came with my kashat and kakota, I was told, no, 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 no. Kijana, 
haufai kufaa hivyo so i was given another gown yenye ilikuwa kubwa so inakaa hivi inaaguka hapa because as a preacher you should be decent i wonder whether when was i decent before or after the gown and then we were told you should preach starting there actually it had to be you had to be caged ili usije kukosea so kuna hii kanyumba tunakaa so we were introduced into salvation legalism kama ni maombi written you don't have to disturb yourself don't have you know ukienda kwa hiyo kanisa uambiwe and now we want you brother to pray for the church don't close your eyes and start lifting hands no there is it is written so ask them for that liturgy so una unaobea nchi vile imeandikwa so that is why we were introduced so it was if it was salvation prayers fasting uh preaching all was done according to that, the the way that you, it was said legalism but now ho oh, oh, oh. ha my wife knows it after that tukasikia we are uh, we want to get out of this so tukaingia kwa ingine it was good but now the spirit could talk that we study the whole service and the prophecies were made three hours and so you are there so tungeenda like we are here i don't want to offend anybody but that's how it was so tumetoka pale in that legalism but now we went into the freedom in our spirit when we were told no 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 you don't disturb the spirit when he's talking so if, if you came to preach if you go to preach there please you just be ready you going to preach saa kumi kule until roho amemaliza kuongea na tulikuwa tunaimba we sang we sang two songs and the, we saw amnabi and had quite disturbed so this prophet could be disturbed and we were like hey and so tunasimama so tunauliza so you listen and the prophet said are you singing to a dead god or a live god so I'm, a live god gaiwe muoyo okay how mura Muraina ni murite kama mutirete ni torete so tumekula and so you are told god is very angry so go back to singing another so we could sing that is now being spirit in the freedom of the spirit that's now the freedom we were introduced to and now after singing we could not sit down until the prophet talks and he talks and he goes round and we are oh, two hours and then we do not know yet who is going to preach So after the prophet is settled you are like namasalia uh, newe weho so you are being pointed you are there that's how you were introduced to preaching with kina pastor we don't know so we went all of us we were like six of us men and so we, we all of us have read the bible we are, we must have a sermon so because eventually masalia newe weho is this you now to give us the word That was the freedom of the spirit you were introduced to. So from this extreme of the mainstream, even kuomba, you cannot pray the way you want. Then we were taken to the extreme of in quotes license being led into the freedom of the spirit. And we were told you should not disturb the spirit. And when you preached, you preached, the prophet could raise, "Hey!" and so you could keep quiet. That's how it was. So when I'm talking I was reading the book of Galatians I'm telling you it is talking to me even if it is not talking to anybody because I have been into both extremes and now when I'm looking into the freedom because I remember I stood there and the pastor of that church told me Mashari I will be out for like two months and I want you to come here and represent me and I want to pray for you before these people so that they can accept you I'll be a pastor of Sinyombe but now I was left I told them please from today I want us to go through the bible verse by verse and if you are here you are not able to see the bible come i pray for you you get healed and another a lady who now is in heaven she came for i prayed for her she could see the bible and from that day i was like to be casted away of that place i was the demon of that church how can i hinder the spirit that i'm saying the spirit aongea garau tumpati dakika 10 then we study the bible the other minutes and he told me no and it never happened it never happened Right now we are seeking the freedom of the spirit. Paul is telling them Paul is telling them uh, nobody is justified before God by the law. The word justification means so much that God is counting you as if you have never sinned. As if you have never sinned. 
I see my brother who got saved today, he's nodding. Wow, he's feeling it. He's seeing, you know, he, you, can't, you can't imagine. I was feeling a sinner and now Jesus is saying, you are no longer a sinner. Hallelujah. You are no longer a sinner. Hmm? He could show me some signs. Then I talk but I told him, Jesus has not condemned you. And you are the righteousness of God from today. He said, I want that Jesus now. I told him, it is now. And after this, to baptize, and what a joy. Nobody can be justified before God because of what they do. But it is by trusting in Jesus Christ. I've got uh, two minutes. And I don't want to do this word any disservice. Can we pray to God that he may help you to understand the freedom that you have in him. In any extent that you don't yet know. Because God wants to give to us so many things. Though Jesus bought for us and purchased for us. There is so much wealth in the kingdom of God. But could be because of those literal laws and regulations. Because God can see them. They are hindering me from accessing the kingdom benefits. The righteousness of God. Even those that have not yet received the spirit of God. It could be the reason is those, these laws. Because when I came to church, I was told, you should never shout. The Holy Spirit is a humble person. So from that day onwards, whenever the Holy Spirit wants to fill you, you are too much of cons a conservative. You don't want to receive the Spirit so that you can fall down. Because we are told, the Spirit of God is humble and gentle. And that one became a block up to date. You have never received the Holy Spirit. You have never received whatever else God wants to give you. Do you know God has so much space waiting for us? There is so much wealth that God has kept for us in the spirit. If only we may access. The only way is to believe God. And to know Jesus has already paid for that. There is this other gospel that came by. Of paying the price. Paying the price. It was in the, in the early 20, 2000. Pay the price. And so it's when from that time. People believed. That you have not yet paid the sufficient price for you to be anointed by God. For you to be called a servant of God. For you to receive this and the other. As much as praying and fasting and doing those other things are good. But don't associate those people with you receiving any favor from God. So God is willing even now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Even if you've not fasted for too long. God can do it for you. If it is healing. It is available here and now for you. Irrespective of the name of that disease. I, you know, the curses in Deuteronomy are like, even though these diseases that have got no names, God knew they would come corona and all those others. Can you receive them freely? Jesus has done it for you. You just have to believe in that finished work. Nothing about you, it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. You can't pray to God. Father, may you minister to us individually at our, at our own level. That God Almighty, we can see the wealth that is kept for us in the kingdom of God. And may you minister to us, pointing to us all these hindrances in the form of self-righteousness and legalism. Others, Lord, are trapped into carnality, into righteousness. We are misusing the freedom that you have given us. And that also is hindering us from living a free life. Forgive us and help us this day. May you be a church who is, who is ready to walk in the freedom of Christ. And may you save us forever from legalism and carnality. That God, you may be glorified through our lives. When we be healed, when we be full of the Spirit, when we are rich, Father, you are happy. Because that's why Jesus, you died for us, to give us. We thank you and bless. We surrender to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless us so much. Thank you for being patient.